Hi, so in this short video, we're gonna go through the top three Microsoft Teams productivity tips. Stick around for all three of those. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director at MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient, increase well-being, increase productivity for their employees, help make everything more efficient and a better place to work, happening to use Microsoft 365. So if you've even got inkling that you have not structured your Microsoft the right way, you're spending time finding stuff, getting lost in things, then either check out the rest of these videos or book a call using the link in the description below because it can be quite difficult to change an entire organization and that's where our consulting comes in. So looking forward to seeing some of you on the free strategy call. If you're not ready for that, just make sure you subscribe to these videos. We've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week and we've got some other free resources if you want to know more in the description below, including free webinar chopped up into bite-sized pieces on the mistakes that 99% of organizations make when they're thinking about productivity and Microsoft at work. So check that out if you haven't already. But onto the video, the top three productivity tips for using Microsoft Teams. Number one, think in terms of productivity, you want to reduce the amount of things coming into you and reduce the number of ways that you can lose stuff. Both happen to most of my consulting clients, usually a good trigger to work together. So if you've got more teams set up than people, if you've got more channels than people, or both, you probably haven't taken the time to simplify how you're working and help your employees be more productive by just not overwhelming them with stuff. Similarly, if you're still using internal email, Teams chat, Teams channel messages, WhatsApp, Telegrams, whatever else, things on comments and things on other systems. There's just too many things coming into people. They're going to lose stuff. They're not going to be able to keep, keep track of stuff. So the first thing you want to do is solely use the Teams bit of Teams to, to, to do all of your internal work. And uh, if you need help structuring that, that's what we do at MeTime. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're a small, medium enterprise, you can probably get away with one large team smaller number of larger teams than people generally set up if they're left to their own devices. You want to think about creating a digital equivalent of an open plan office. You wouldn't have more offices than people in your organization. So if you've got more teams or more channels in your Microsoft environment than people, think of it as like, well, I've got too many offices. Clearly, people are not going to be able to collaborate well and they're going to lose stuff. So you want to simplify the number of teams. Pragmatically, you can never get away with with one large team, there's always going to be bits you need to split out for privacy, usually HR, finance, and senior leadership team. So you should have like a handful of teams, and then in each channel, think about having a channel for five to ten people, roughly, as a general rule of thumb. You want a enough place that someone can, you know, collaborate with everyone else they need to collaborate to get their job done. Teams is for collaboration and uh, predominantly. And if you simplify that and then move all your files over, so if you've got other SharePoint sites or on-premise shared drives or whatever you've got, um, if you've overused Teams chat, the files are actually living in the OneDrive of the person that shared it, actually just getting all of those files and sticking them now in the channels that you've set up in a simplified file folder structure, that will make everything else easier or relevant. So that's tip number one is simplify your team structure, stop the amount of things coming in. At the same time you're simplifying that structure, you need a cultural change. They so were not going to use internal email. We're going to use Teams channels. We're not going to use group chats in Teams. We're going to use Teams channels. You spot a theme that there needs to be one way that you are genuinely agreeing to get things done at your organization. That is the biggest productivity tip you can get for using Microsoft Teams. Once you've done that, tip number two is turn things into tasks. So once you're getting used to putting everything in a channel, including meetings, I should say, so you can quite easily, you know, reply to a thread of information and then schedule a meeting right in the thread of everything that's going on. Every, all the chat messages, all the assets and everything are then kept in thread. With that meeting, it pops up. Everyone else can see it, that meeting going on. And only the people that you invite will still get a Outlook calendar invite. So that's a bonus little tip there. But tip number two is get things into tasks. So wherever you are in Teams, whether it's a, a message halfway down a thread 
or that entire message thread, you can click on the three dots and create a task. And I can either put that in your to-do, which is now Microsoft calling private tasks because they're in the middle of merging Microsoft to-do and Microsoft Planner together. Anything in private tasks is just viewable by you or stick it in a planner plan. And you can see we've got a few here which we could add it to and we can put a task in this planner. We can assign it to somebody and we can give it a due date. And if we do all of that, planner is going to follow that person up for us. So it's going to send them a ping saying, look, someone's assigned you a task. It's going to follow them up by saying your task this week are due on Thursday, say, it's going to follow up. You've got tasks due tomorrow, you've got tasks due today, and then follow up when they haven't completed that task. Um, and you can keep track of everything in Planner. Similarly, if it's just a task for you, you can just go and stick it in your private tasks. There's a few less options because you don't need to sign it to someone because it's only you. Give it a due date and you're going to get followed up in Microsoft To Do. So if you're not in the habit of managing your work by, a, by tasks, then that is the second best productivity tip that I can give you, and that's how to do it in Microsoft Teams. Third one, which is new for me, since Microsoft have changed the files sidebar app into OneDrive, OneDrive now is actually useful. So even if you've got too many Teams and channels and going on and you're losing files, and they haven't done step one, then this is the way that you can keep track of your the files you need to work on. OneDrive is a bizarre concept now. It used to be your OneDrive is your personal one and Teams or SharePoint is shared to everyone by default. Now it's all mixed up. So OneDrive app actually syncs your OneDrive, but also can sync from Teams or SharePoint. And the OneDrive web app, which now appears in Teams, at the home view actually shows you files from wherever you've got access to them and the quick access down the side is all the Teams and SharePoint sites you've got. My files is then the old school, like OneDrive, here's just my own documents that happen to be synced to the cloud, but also appear in my documents desktop, wherever it's syncing from. So that's a bit complicated in itself. If you want to know more about that, then this video might help if you want to watch that next. But now the new OneDrive app appears in Teams, actually it is quite useful if you get over that initial learning to show you that it's, it's showing you stuff from my files but also from things that you've accessed from other teams and other sharepoint sites you can see this one here is not in my files this one is in my files for example you can favorite the files that you want to get back to so a little star icon for this one say you can star it like you see i've got two starred already and if you go to favorites, it's just going to show you a cut down version of the files that you work on most often, wherever they live. So they could be in your OneDrive, they could be in any team, they could be in any SharePoint site, and you can quickly get back to them. If you've got a lot of files that you go back to quite recently, they're all favorited, you can then narrow it down by folder, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or PDF now. So that's really useful. If you wanted to sort by people or by meetings, so I knew that file was in a particular meeting, or even if you just want to go back and watch the recordings from there, the OneDrive app in Teams now is pretty useful, which it wasn't before when it was just files, in my opinion. But yeah, those are the top three Microsoft Teams productivity tips that hopefully will help you get sorted today quite quickly. Like I say, if you need more help for your entire organization, then book a call using the link in the description below to see if we can help make your workplace a better place to work, more efficient, more productive, increase well-being. If you just want to know more as an individual, then consider clicking some of the free trainings we've got. If you want even more help as an individual, consider joining the channel where you can get quicker access to questions in the comments, early access to videos, or in MeTime Mastermind, get courses that have sold for hundreds to thousands of pounds, all for less than 50 pounds a month. Click join button just below this video to support the channel that way. But thanks for watching this video so far and we'll see you in the next one.